How you doing today, folks? It's early July, and I just wanted to come back and show you how the privet hedge is coming in. And everything is coming in really, really wonderfully. I have to say, privet hedges are very forgiving as far as pruning. Pretty much anywhere you cut them, they're gonna sprout some growth and fill in. If we start at the front of the hedge here, you can see all that new growth coming up on the hedge. And there's a couple maintenance things I would do here. But first, let me just show you the tips. So here's, here's where I would have cut this spring. You can actually see, if you take a good look at that, you can see there's some callus tissue already forming to close that off. But all this growth right here, which is about, that's about, um, about 18 inches long already, all this new growth, you know, just came this year. And then up here as well, you can see where I cut it and then there's the new growth. And when I talked about not cutting everything at the top, that's why, because you wanna make sure when your growth comes in that it doesn't all come at the tops. Like here, maybe I should have cut some of these a little bit lower so we'd have more growth down low. This is a good example of one where I did cut down low, so you've got all this growth just exploding in the middle of the shrub. Now, one thing I would do is I would come back uh, even this year or next year, and I'd thin out some of this growth. This is way too much. So you just wanna thin it out a little bit and select the branches that are growing in the direction you want them to grow. You wanna remove anything that's coming, growing back towards the center of the shrub where the, where the growth is too tight. And you just wanna you know, thin it, selectively prune it, you know, help it to grow. Now, during the video, I mentioned uh, bittersweet vines. And here's, here's one of the bittersweets I, I cut back to the ground. I don't know, can you see that? There's a stump right here. And this is a bittersweet. We just, we just weeded it. But it twines up and it goes all the way. So this vine actually grew, this bittersweet vine grew about seven feet tall in about two months. So the other thing you wanna do is go through and remove the, the weedy growth that's in there. So you've got the bittersweet vines, and then, you know, good help is so hard to find these days. There was a maple tree growing here, and I, I cut the top of the maple tree, but I still have to cut that back to the ground. Okay, and then another thing we would wanna do here is, so these really tall, skinny ones, I, I clip the top, which, made them top heavy because all the new growth made it top heavy and it leaned over. So I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna clip this one right back down to the ground. But back here, the farther we get, there's a maple tree growing overhead here. So near the front of the hedge, the growth isn't quite as, as quick because of the shade of the tree. But back through here, we're pretty much in full sun and, and these hedges are really taken off. but I would just uh, you know, let it grow out this year and then maybe a little bit this year, but more next year, come through and just thin out. Now that we've got bushy growth up top, we can cut some of these back farther in the shrub, about halfway, and encourage that growth farther down. And you know, this is a privet hedge, folks. This could be, you know, I'm big on selective pruning. You could selectively prune it and have a more natural look, but it's a privet hedge. It grows pretty quickly. So this is one case where you could come back with the hedge clippers and just give it a good shaping. If you're gonna cut it with hedge clippers, cut it narrow at the top. You wanna have a pyramidal shape to it because you wanna have a fat bottom so light can get to the branches at the bottom and a narrower top so the light passes through and makes it to the bottom. But I mean, this is where I, I did my, my close-up of how to prune, where I had the camera right over my shoulder. And I mean, this just really filled in beautifully. And then we got a maple tree. I don't know if this is that giant maple tree. Nope, that's not the giant one. This is where, oh, that's poison ivy.
So anything you see like this, folks, you see you got the maple trees coming back in, and be careful, there is leaves of three, let it be. There is some poison ivy down there. You just wanna come through and prune that out so it doesn't come back. Oh, and here's another, here's another mistake. So we, we have uh, a blood good Japanese maple growing here, and I guess I, I thinned out the top of it, but I, I didn't thin out the bottom. So I, I got a little bit more work to do. But uh, this, is, this is what you're looking at, folks. And if you remember the before pictures, I mean, this, this whole house just looked overgrown and unmaintained when the hedge was large, and now we've got everything really nicely back in control. Well, folks, thanks a lot for sticking with me through the series. You know, I had a lot of fun making this one. I think it was fun to kind of take it day by day and even just to share kind of a little bit about what's going on in my mind. Uh, I think about day two when I was, when I was utterly overwhelmed. Um, you know, it's part of life though, folks, and, and I guess all we can do is uh, take the good with the bad and, and just uh, get through it. So thanks a lot for watching, folks, and have yourselves a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.